<laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Fantasy Hockey Hacks podcast, a proud member of the Hockey Podcast Network and the official podcast of Left Wing Lock, your number one source for fantasy hockey intelligence. Uh, Tyler's just blowing away all of his smoke because we are now recording video as well as uh, <laughs> as well as audio. So uh, for those of you watching on the YouTube channel, that's what that's all about. For those of you listening on, on the podcast, uh, that's what that's about. Um, where do we start? Where I, I guess... No, no, John tonight. Um, John made I, his own list. I yeah, I was gonna, I, I added him to the list just because it was short notice. I figured he'd be here to add his own things to the list, and he's and he's not. So, um, John has made his own list tonight. John John's made his own list. All right, so we'll start there. John's list. He made it. Uh, John, hope to see you next week. But that's two weeks straight, bud. So three strikes and you're out. Yeah. <laughs> Tough crowd. Not actually, not actually. Uh, Tyler, good to have you back, buddy. It's been a while. Good to be here. If it was actually three strikes and you're out, I would be out. So <laughs> good thing it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all good. It's all good. I know John's super busy. That guy's been, uh, he's been stressed. He's been, he's been barely sleeping lately. So uh, things are hopping at work. They sure are. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, uh, we got lots to get through here. We're going to do... Um, I guess NHL round one playoff highlights, and then we'll do round two preview, and then we've got our uh, headlines that we we always do. Um, so I'll just rip through fantasy lock of the week presented by Left Wing Lock. First up, obviously, it has to be Connor McDavid. Um, 19.97 fantasy points per game in DraftKings through the first round. 14 points, four goals, led the playoffs in scoring. Tyler, any, anything else you really need to say about Connor McDavid other than he's been phenomenal through the first round no he's pretty good that's, <laughs> that's all I got. probably that's all we need good. to say yeah he's good yeah. uh yeah he, he he showed up when it mattered which is probably more than we can say for austin matthews <laughs> Zing. i'm kidding he actually had a good series bruce and i talked about this earlier austin matthews and mitch martyr both had good series um they sure did it was just a tight series so uh also just as we've been doing kind of covering fantasy lock from more of a DraftKings perspective. And so I've got uh, a center in Mika Zibanejad that I like moving forward. He did really well in the first round, 11 points, I believe and four goals, uh, might've been three goals averaging 17 and almost a half points, fantasy points per game. Salary is still just around $6,600. Carter Verhage been a big surprise. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. How many points did he have in the first round? Uh, 12 points and six goals. Yeah. McDavid had what? 14? 14. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a surprise. Yeah. You, you didn't have that one in your bingo card for sure. Nope. Uh, also on, de- on defense is Jacob Slavin. He, I believe like we were talking about this earlier, led all skaters in Carolina in points for the first round. Um, I'm just going to pull that up here really quickly. Slavin, where are you? Eight points. Uh, yeah, he's in there somewhere. We'll go with it. I'm pretty sure that's factual. Uh, the other one here is Jake Ottinger in goal. Bruce, you and I <laughs> talked about it earlier. My goodness. He's he should an get RFA a contract too. with Michelin for all the rubber he's seen. That? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's not the way I've heard that joke before, but good on you. <laughs> he, he's, also, he's also an RFA. What does that next contract look like? And it's going to look pretty nice, I think. I think so too. Uh, yeah, we were talking from a fantasy perspective too, Tyler. Like, how how early are you prepared to take Jake Ottinger next season? Uh, wins matter, so I think Dallas is kind of. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I took all my goalies late, so. I'm probably not a good person to ask that, but um, he definitely moved up the list from from where he was drafted last year. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, no question. Uh, and then in the utility slider, I've got Ryan O'Reilly. He had a really solid first round as well, uh, moving past Minnesota in six games, which Bruce you did not see coming. I did not. <laughs> I tried a little. <laughs> we know you did. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I had to ask. 
And that, and that does it for the Fantasy Lock of the Week. So, Bruce, I'm going to hand it off to you here for headlines with the hacks, news, and injury updates for, I don't even know, was it May? What are we running here now? Is this May 9th to the 16th? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> I had a long weekend, so don't judge me too much. <laughs> Take it away. Right. The news and notes in no particular order. Uh, NHL announced that it's Vesna finalists on Tuesday. Igor Shesterkin from the New York Rangers. UC Saros from the Nashville Predators and Jacob Markstrom from the Calgary Flames. Who's everybody's pick for Vesna? Um, probably Markstrom. It's just Starkin for me. I, I think- yeah, for me it's, it's just Starkin and then slight chance of maybe Saros, but definitely just Starkin. I think Markstrom just based off the the shutouts that he had. Um, that, yeah, Calgary's place to where they finished up so. But all, all three are very well deserving of the award, no matter which one wins. Most of these votes come out of the East, so Shesterkin is probably right. I would say that's probably the guy that's going to take it. Yeah, they don't like goalies from the West. Well, they don't watch well, the games out West. They, they can't stay up that late. They don't they're like they're too busy the sleeping. The only guy yeah. they've actually stayed up late enough to watch is Connor McDavid, and even that they've they've given up on because they're going to vote for Matthews for the the heart. So. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, yikes. All right, moving on. Uh, Patrick Marlowe announced his retirement after 23 seasons. Marlowe tallied 566 goals, 631 assists for 1,197 points over 1,779 career games. Another Saskatchewan dude making the headlines. We like Patty this- Marlowe. I don't care what John says. Yeah. <laughs> John doesn't For like sure. Him. Uh, let's see <laughs> the NHL announced its Calder finalists on Wednesday Wednesday Michael Bunting of the Toronto Maple Leafs John will love this one <laughs> Trevor Zegers of the Anaheim Ducks and more cider Detroit Red Wings well we already know it's cider's trophy so we're just being nice to the other two yeah agreed I hope so. I, it, it should be more at ciders to win like I have you guys seen that meme the, the Billy Madison meme floating around. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. It's, it's, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah. It, that's it's perfectly for this. Yeah, yeah. It sure does. Uh Nashville Predators are the first were the first team to be eliminated from the NHL playoffs. As Daryl Sutter aptly put, it was a pretty much a waste of the ten or a waste of eight days for the Predators. <laughs> Nashville would also like to welcome their new owner, Kale McCarr. Three goals, seven <laughs> assists, and ten points in Four games against the Predators. Yeah, I think you called that one, Bruce. Were you? I think you were the yeah. only guy on the podcast to say it was going to go four games. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I was the only one to say a sweep. Everyone else was, I think, five. I think. Yeah. yeah, five yeah. games. Yeah, and the Montreal Canadiens finally won something: the draft lottery. They will pick <laughs> overall in the NHL entry draft in July in Montreal. So there we go. I'm happy for him. I'm actually happy for him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was too. I, yeah. Like, because who was the the other team? Was was it New Jersey? New Jersey oh. moved up again this year. This year, okay. Who, I can't remember who was in, whoever was the other team in the running for the at the end there. But I, I was happy to see it be Arizona. Montreal. And was it was it Arizona at the end? I think it was Arizona at the end. Yeah. Either way, and and then too, they're actually going to be able to hold the draft lottery and have fans there, which would be great. Yeah, definitely in Montreal, they'll be they'll be packing the. Back in the arena to see Shane Shane Wright. Is that? I believe so. Uh, Tyler, I think you appreciated my tweet about not knowing the draft lottery was happening. I think this is the first year in like a decade that I was was not aware. Yeah. Beyond Shane Wright and probably beyond the top three, I don't even really know. Or care. Or care. Or or care. (laughs) And every other year, I would probably know like the first 60 guys that were going to be drafted. Yeah, who are, ta- who are we taking? Who are we taking seventh yeah. overall or first overall or whatever? But yeah, yeah. So it don't feels care. good. Feels good. Yeah. Got we're nothing. Ma- we're making progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Darnell Nurse was suspended one game after headbutting Philip Deneau in game five. Nurse said, well, Nurse will be available for game seven if necessary. And it did go to seven. It was necessary, Bruce. It was necessary. Definitely Very necessary. necessary. 
Uh, Sidney Crosby was injured in Wednesday night's game against the Rangers. Reports were saying he was being evaluated for a concussion. His agent refuted that. Um, also, the hit from Jacob Truba, Truba was deemed legal by the NHL Department of Player Safety. I, Tyler, I like your take on that because we, Bruce and I have talked about it. I think we both agreed, Bruce, it was, it was at the end of the day, it was fine. I think yeah. watching it at full speed, it looked like a headshot. It looked like a chicken wing, but if you watch it from reverse angles, uh, it, it almost didn't look like he made contact to the head. I, I don't know. And I know Jacob Truba has kind of a bit of a history for being a little dirty, but... He likes to throw the big hits. Yeah, and he, he likes to get his elbows up too sometimes. But Tyler, what's your take on it? it? I think it was clean. It looked it looked just the way that he kind of pushed his stick forward. He was trying to make a play on the puck, and I'd, like there was no intent to to hit him where he did. I think Crosby's history with concussions probably played more into that than than the hit itself. Um. And for his agent or whoever to say that he didn't have a concussion, you seen him on the bench after and him putting his head down. He had a concussion. Not not ideal if you're Sidney Crosby. No. No, because no. he's had a history of a few of them. And honestly, it sucks to see that. Like yeah. I hate to see. Um, it would be the worst thing to happen if his career is cut short because of because of concussions for how good of a player he is. So, most definitely. Uh, the NHL announced the Hart Trophy nominees for the 21 22 season. Connor McDavid from the Edmonton Oilers, Aust- excuse me, Austin Matthews from the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Igor Shesterkin from the New York Rangers. Like we said, we, we know where that's going, Bruce. We know where it's yeah. going. We don't like we know, it, but we, we know where it's going. Yeah, exactly. They're The only one they're voting for is either Matthews or Shesterk, and they're not voting for McDavid anymore, which is I, unfortunate. I think it's just voter fatigue, honestly. Like, when you watch the same player do phenomenal things every single season and put up 120 points or on pace for 120 points, it, it gets old, apparently, right? So, um, yeah. The, the frustrating yeah. thing, too, is if you look at – McDavid's last 20 or 25 games, the most important games of the season. He was above and beyond everybody else. Matthews, yep. yeah, he scored his goals, but obviously there these are already voted on and you don't the playoff games don't count. But who would you rather have in a game 7? McDavid, <laughs> McDavid. doing everything or you know, Matthews just trying to get that one shot. Yeah. So no, McDavid played twenty seven over twenty seven minutes the other night in Game Seven. Like he he saved his best game for last, and there's no yeah. contest. Like and he had yeah. the assist on the the CC goal, which ended up being the game winner. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, also, the NHL announced the Ted Lindsay nominee, not nominees, nominees for the twenty one twenty two season. Oh, correct, correct uh, those notes, Bruce. <laughs> Uh, which also includes uh, Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, and Roman Yossi. I, I think one... I think he'll get a chance. Like Connor will have a chance in this one, but I wonder about Yossi too, just given the season he had. Because this one's nominated. This one's by the players, right? Yeah, Lindsay. Yeah, so I, I could see Connor taking this one, which would just be a kick to the nuts for Matthews. Um, <laughs> I mean, because honestly, Connor every year he wins the the Art Ross, and then he's won the Hart, and then he generally wins the Lindsay as well. So, yeah, and and the player vote that they ran the survey, they all said Connor's the player, right? He's the guy. Yeah, that was the that was the survey they showed. Yeah, I think for me, if I was a player, I'd I'd rather have the Lindsay anyways. Yeah, because oh, it's forward. voted on by your peers, right? Not a bunch of sports writers sitting in their yeah. chairs and. Yeah, agreed. Ah, the Edmonton Oilers forced Game 7 with a 4-2 win in L.A. The big story here was the health of Leon Dreisaitl, who was basically down to one leg. I I think it's um it's it's a high ankle sprain. He's either like it looked... I think it's that play from Anderson when he horse-collared him and twisted his ankle there. Yeah, it was a garbage That's play. That's where it looked like, yeah. It's a garbage play. I could barely see it, though, because I was in... I was actually staying in camp, and they had like a tiny TV that was like this big with little <laughs> lines going through it, and everything was like 
jerking around. You couldn't really tell, but um, it sucks. It sucks if that if that affects him moving forward here, which it probably will. Yeah. Um, it's too bad that it wasn't something through the course of play and a horse collar from behind after the whistle is. It was a dirty play. Garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. Actually, you know what? I take it back. John's not on the list. We're putting Mikey Anderson on the list because that guy's a loser. And his garbage spear there too to McDavid. Did you see that? It was yeah. after the whistle and they were kind of yeah. – McDavid was turning away and he just speared him and yep. not even a well, call for it or anything. Nobody does anything. Nope. Nope. So, I hated it. I missed that. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple guys on the Kings that, that play that way. Kempe's kind of like that too. Um, I didn't frustrating much, team. Did, didn't much care for uh, – for Lemieux either. No. Or Athens no. CU. Or Grunstrom when he like flew through the air when uh when Nuge breathed <laughs> on him. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, when you cross check them, they don't generally go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're gonna forget about all of those though on Wednesday. Oh boy. There's gonna be replacements for all of those guys <laughs> that you don't like. So yeah. Yeah. John's yeah. list is gonna be full for next week. <laughs> we're gonna have to make a Tyler's list. <laughs> John doesn't show up. We'll have to rename it. Yeah, yeah. calling John. Two strikes are out. Uh, speaking of Connor McDavid, he is the second player in NHL history to have six multi-point games in a single playoff series. The other Bruins legend, Rick Nifty Middleton, fourteen points for Connor McDavid in the series. Only Wayne Gretzky with eighteen had more points in a single series in franchise history. Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Uh, St. Louis Blues moved on to the second round of the playoffs with an impressive victory over the Wild in Game 6. Uh, Wild chose to go with uh, Cam Talbot in net for Game 6, but it didn't uh, It didn't make any difference. Uh, Wild were outclassed in Game 6. I hated that. I loved it. <laughs> I, I hated it. I... I hate it. Like, how do you put Talbot in that situation? Like, if you're going to go with Flurry, go with Flurry. Don't just yeah. decide, yeah. well, we need this game, so, hey, you're up. You haven't played all series, but it's on you now. Even though we brought in a guy to replace you because we didn't yeah. think you were good enough. So, in our, in our picks last week, Tyler, I I was going to take Minnesota to, to send it back to St. Louis for Game 7 because I had St. Louis winning that series in seven games. And when I saw they put Talbot in, I, I switched my pick. I said, no, St. Louis is going to close this out in six because I don't I, exactly desperate. your line of thinking. Yeah. Why are you putting in a cold goaltender? And, and we've seen from Talbot too, like he can fold sometimes, right? He, he can be great at times, yeah. but I, I don't know if you can trust him hundred percent either. So. Yeah. I think if you just put him in that spot, it, it screams desperation for everybody. And Talbot's got to see that too. And you just added extra pressure on him. So yeah, I hated it. Yep. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see Cal Talbot's got one more year on his on his deal and the Wilds are entering cap hell. They've got a thirteen million dollar dead cap hit coming here in the next season. Plus they gotta try and sign re sign Fiala possibly. It's gonna be a mess. Yep. I think they get rid of Fiala. But... Someone will take him. He had was it eighty or eighty five points this year? Fiala? Yeah. Yeah. This is the perfect time to get rid of him. Yep. I'm guessing he goes to the Devils. Go back up to Brink's truck for him. Okay. Uh, Carter Verhage, we talked about him earlier. He scored his third straight game-winning goal. His last one is in overtime to send the Florida Panthers to the second round of the playoffs for the first time since 1996 with a hard-fought victory over the Washington Capitals. So who would have picked Carter Verhege as the leading scorer for the Florida Panthers in the first round of the playoffs? Not me. Nobody here. <laughs> I, no, me neither. I didn't didn't see that, but uh, in DFS, I, uh, I plugged it. <laughs> I put him, pretty much put him in every time, and he didn't disappoint. No, not at all. Uh, what do you guys think is going to happen to the Capitals now? They got to solve their goaltending issue. I guess would be the first first thing I would look at. 
Like they they got to decide who's their guy. Are they going to stick with Samsonov or Vanacek? I I don't know. Like, because what they're doing now is not working. Playing that tandem is not working. And I read somewhere today that uh, Backstrom's back is it that he has uh, having issues with? I, I saw. In... I thought it was his hip. I, <laughs> I'll have to fact I, check that. But I I yeah. saw something about they have to make some decisions, right? So it sounds like it's fairly yeah. severe. Yeah, it sounds like it's not it. It's never going to heal properly, so they kind of have to decide what they're going to do with him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Max Domi, three point night the other night leads Carolina to a game seven victory over the Boston Bruins. The question is: Is this the last time that we see Patrice Bergeron in a Bruins uniform? No. He'll be back Maybe. next year. He he's gonna he's gonna do the the Chara, and he's gonna sign a. He'll have a, an evergreen deal on the table. They'll just tell him, sign a one-year deal. We'll we'll keep you for as long as you want to stick around, and it'll be up to him. One year for the league minimum and just keep rolling it out until well, he he's done. I, I think they're going to pay him a little more to start anyway. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Like They're not going to back the truck up for him, but no. he's, de- he's going to get paid a, a fair salary if he wants to stay, and if he decides he just wants to chase the cup or make more money, he can always go elsewhere. Like, yeah. There, there's 31 other teams in the NHL that would be lining up to sign him if they could. Well, absolutely. And some of those would probably back up the Brinks truck for him. Yeah. E- even it, with his age. I think it's yeah. probably similar to the Joe Pafelski, but cap it'll be a little bit less. Probably be like a two or three years at five. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Oh, look, horror for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They dropped yet another Game 7, this time to the defending Stanley Cup champions, Tampa Bay Lightning. So what do we think, guys? What's uh, Is there going to be any major changes coming in Leafland? I feel bad, but it just makes me happy just, <laughs> <laughs> just hearing it. It just makes me happy. But I, honestly, they really don't have to make any changes other than they should have never signed John Tavares, but that doesn't matter now. Uh, beyond that, they really don't have to. They don't have to change. They just have to get over that hump. They have to have that killer instinct. Instinct in Game Six, like they should have had it in Game Six. Um, and we'd all be talking about something different. But you have to get over that hump. And yeah, the team. The team they have is good. But yeah, they just have to get over that hump. It's it's hard. Like. As Oilers fans, we know that we're 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 a couple goals, honestly, this year from being bounced in six. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it's yeah. it's it's hard to get past the first round, and when you're in the East and you're playing teams like Boston and Tampa in the first round every year, like that's that's hard. Um, I I don't know, Tyler. I kind of get the sense that they're gonna make some change. I mean, like they've got guys like Giordano, right? He won't be back next year. Um, they've got to they've got to tweak their defense a little bit, and then. Are they happy with Jack Campbell and Net? I think so, but I, I don't know that. I, I think they're. I don't know if Campbell just... will be back. I think his performance this season. I think someone will sign him away, sign him out of Toronto. Unless he's wanted, unless he wants to take a deal like another team friendly deal. I don't think he's back in Toronto next year. I think he will want to take that because he was somebody that kind of hung around in the minors and was kind of talked to somebody who wasn't going to make it. And then you kind of make it in Toronto of all places. You're going to want to, you're going to want to be there. So yeah, I think there's probably one good forward that probably leaves. Nylander. Uh, yeah. To make. That's what everyone's saying. It'll be Nylander on the way out. And I, I think, I think they should, they need to spread out everything. If you've got two guys at 11 million, you kind of, don't have a choice, so. Yeah, they, they. I mean, they signed him for too much anyway. Nylander was signed for too much money. Yeah, and, and he's a good player, but now they've also been playing on the third line, right? So. Yeah. They're gonna make some changes, and then Michael Bunting is gonna want more money too next year. Oh yeah, absolutely right. Before his fiftieth birthday. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But he'll have his collar. <laughs> I, I really, truly hope he doesn't, but... The fix is in. We'll see. 
if he wins it, I think there will be murder being yelled through the NHL halls if he if Bunting actually wins it. Well, if he wins the Calder and Matthews wins the Hart, uh, people are going to quickly forget about the playoffs and they'll be all amped up in the books. All the sports books will be putting them as favorites to win the Stanley Cup next year and the cycle and then, starts all over again. And then they'll flame out in the first round yet again. Good. For the record, I picked them in seven against Tampa. <laughs> I, th- I thought they'd finally do it this year, but... Yeah, I, 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 uh, no, not happening. No, no dice. Nope. nope. Not against Tampa. Ah, so another interesting note from both the Hurricane and Lightning wins. Both teams' leading point scorers in Game 7 were both trade, trade deadline pickups. For Carolina, it was Max Domi from the Columbus Blue Jackets. And for Tampa Bay, it was Nick Paul from the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Nick Paul's been really good for Tampa. Yeah. Like consistently. He had both goals. Yep. Rather than game seven, too. Yep. Ah, On to happier news. Connor McDavid led the Edmonton Oilers to a game seven victory over the LA Kings. It has to have been his most complete game the Oilers have played all season and by far the best game by Connor himself. Uh, His effort on the second goal in game seven was amazing. There's there's no quit, right? He he just kept going. Like there was no quit. There was two LA players that gave up on the play, and he didn't. What I sorry, Bruce. What I was excited about was that they actually started on time, right? They they came out, and I'd have to go back and look. But I mean, at the end of two periods, they they had well outshot the Kings. Finally, right? It was yeah. Oh, and Connor had that beautiful hit too, like two two minutes into the game, or was it yep. first shift into the game? He, yep. Wait, it was that jersey on the boards there. I was I was watching the game with Milt and my family, and and they all said like right away, right? You just knew like if he's gonna hit like that, he's gonna set the tone, and that was big, right? To to get physical like that early. And yeah. speaking of physicality, and Tyler, I like your thoughts on this too, but I'm I'm really tired of people just trashing Josh Archibald for one reason or another. Like, I think this time of year, he he brings a certain skill set. He's physical, he's fast, he kills penalties, and I think a player like him does have some value this time of year, whether or not he's scoring. I don't know. What do you think? Man, the way he hits is it's crazy. For, for his size, he torpedoes into people. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and when he hits people, it makes noise, and it's great. Um, mm-hmm. But if he's going to play, there's a spot for him in these kind of games, especially in the second round against Calgary. Yeah. Um, he's going to hit you harder and more than Shore. Turris. <laughs> Turris. Even, <laughs> even Puyarvi, like, he's going to hit everything, and he's going he's gonna to torpedo himself into you, so... Uh, there's definitely a spot for him. It's too bad that just the way the whole vaccine and all that stuff kind of went through the year. Um, yeah. yeah, he made his choice and it just, it kind of, it looks bad when the rest of the NHL basically and the rest of the team does what, what was some will say is the right thing to do <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, we won't um, get political, but. No, um, <laughs> but he has a spot in the playoffs. So, and I mean, he can drive himself to Calgary, so <laughs> <laughs> works out great. There you go. Take an Uber. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, ah, the uh, the bread man delivers. So, our, our Timmy Panarin with the game seven game winning goal in overtime sends the Rangers to the second round of the playoffs and defeating the Pittsburgh Penguins. And the next thing was this. Uh, is this it for the big three in Pittsburgh? I say yes. I, I think uh, I think Latang's going to want too much, and he's won his cups in Pittsburgh. I, I think he'd love to be back, but he's not going to take a massive discount to be there. I think he looks at it too and goes, "There's an aging core here. Sid probably just took another concussion, like you said, Tyler. Uh, yeah. Malkin seems to be declining." Um, you've got Gensel well, there and you've got Ross, you got some good players, but I, I don't know if he's going to want to hang around. Cause Malkin's contract expires at the end of the end. Well, has expired at the end of the season. So he's, he's a UFA as well. I, I could see Malkin hanging around though. Like 
just because maybe he's comfortable there. But and and maybe and I think they would be more inclined to sign him at a reasonable dollar amount. But I just Latang has basically priced himself out given his his play this season. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I think I think if Crosby wants him to be there, they're going to be there. I don't that, know. Yeah. That, there's, there's, yeah, there's something you said for that too, Tyler. Because Crosby's not going to want to like have his last two or three, maybe four seasons, rebuilding. Like that's not what he's going to want. And as long as Crosby's there, you should be rebuilding. Well, and Burke won't want to, right? Like, yeah, Burke will have final stand that stuff, and he wants to win now. While he's got Crosby. Yeah, trade him to the Leafs for Tavares. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> No, that's never happening, Bruce. <laughs> I could see Just, if if Latang wanted to. I mean, Montreal. If everybody ends back up on LTIR, they do have a little bit of space. Yep. And uh, first French, overall, French pick, Canadian. French Canadian. Yeah. Like I, I could, I just for some reason I get the sense that Latang will get moved, but or sign elsewhere, I should say. Well, we've seen well, Stranger Things in in the off season from other players, right? Things that people we never thought would move, move. Like look at Tavares. Never thought he would leave Petrangelo the island. Too. And sure enough, he signs in Toronto. Did you say Petrangelo, Tyler? Yeah, he's another guy that really nobody thought that he was going to leave and goes to Vegas. So, Yeah. Another interesting note from the Rangers-Penguins game is Tristan Jari returned to the lineup for the Penguins, becoming the first goalie in NHL history to debu- debut in a game seven. And he was obviously still hurting because I saw after he was doing his press conference, he had a nice bag taped to his foot. Like, obviously, he's not healed up 100%. Which is surprising. That like, Domingue didn't play terribly. He wasn't outstanding, but he wasn't terrible. That's why you would put Jari in there it just it didn't make a lot of sense to me but I wonder the same thing Bruce <laughs> yeah. uh, Calgary Flames defeated the Dallas Stars in their game seven matchup it took them into overtime <laughs> what can you say about the otter I love the name the otter <laughs> Jay Gottinger with 64 saves for the in the loss for the Stars bright future in Dallas you got Ottinger Robertson Heiskanen Ropey Hints. Sagan. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Ben. There for a while still. Yeah. Radulov. Anton Kudobin. Anton Kudobin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, they do have some really nice pieces there. So, Tyler, like back to your point about Ottinger, you know, not being sure about the wins and all that. I, I think they do have some really good pieces there. It's just, can they build around them and, and can some of those older players show up again next season? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's too bad Ben's contract is so high in Sagan's mm-hmm. because you could, they can definitely be on the team, but you need that, that cap space to have that kind of next level in between um, some of the new guys. But yeah, they've got all the pieces there and they've got a hell of a goalie, so... Klingberg will be gone next year, so that, that's something to consider too. Like I, I, I don't know that he's the biggest piece defensively, but you know he's run the power play there, and he's been he's been somewhat effective. Uh, but but clearing up some cap cap space as well. Yeah, it's yeah. not a ton. It's only four and a half or four and a quarter. But um, yeah, I I think they're gonna be, I think they're gonna be better next year than they were this season, because. I mean, sure, they got into playoffs, but they should have been better than they were all year. Um, yeah. And I think with having Ottinger looking like he took another step, um, they'll probably be right there. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the New York Islanders hired Lane Lambert as their next head coach. I had to Google who he was. I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> But apparently he has gone to the uh, Barry Trotz School of Coaching, so Islanders probably aren't going to look too much different next year as they do for this year when it comes to their style of play. I, I thought it was kind of interesting that 
apparently in Lou Lamorello's press conference, he said, well, part of the reason for letting Trotz go was they wanted a, a new voice in the room. Well, you just hired the assistant coach for the guy you just let go. Is the message going to be that much different? I don't know. Yeah, maybe his style is slightly different from Trotz's. I guess we'll we'll find out soon enough. Yep. Uh, Peter DeBoer was relieved of his duties as coach of the Vegas Golden Knights as the uh, fallout, fallout continues there as well. Good. Good. And they let, uh, I didn't catch the names, but there was two assistant coaches that were let go as well, along with DeBoer. Uh, the NHL released the name of the three finalists for the Masterton Trophy, Zidane O'Chara, Kevin Hayes, and Carey Price. I'm I'm voting Kevin Hayes here if I if I had to vote. I just think so too, as Has he to went be. through a lot this year. You can't like, vote for Chara just because he's old. Like, yeah, I mean, good for you. You <laughs> yeah. are old and you're still playing hockey. Like, <laughs> if if he wasn't nine feet tall and seven hundred pounds, like he wouldn't. Yeah, he wouldn't still be playing. <laughs> no, but it's because he's built like a dinosaur. It's he's still playing hockey so people have to put him in for the <laughs> master team, but it's got to be kevin hayes and even for carrie price carrie price has a lot going on and knee problems and everything else but i mean he played a couple games this year so yeah yeah kevin hayes came back and was actually quite effective you know in, in certain games down the stretch um Kerry Price, I wonder if he's just done. I, I don't know. Like, there, there's lots of chatter at the end of the year. They said, I mean, he said, like, Bruce, you're telling me too. He's not sure he'll be able to get back to the same level based on what his knee's doing right now. And yeah. uh, I don't know. He's, he's dealing with all sorts of stuff. I'm just really skeptical of, of his playing future. Yeah, he said his knee, his knee is not responding the way he feels it needs to for him to maintain the level of play that he feels he needs to do, so... And he said, if this was his last game, he says that he is prepared for that. So that's uh, that's interesting coming directly from him. Yeah. But he is going for a second opinion here over the offseason to see if he can get his knee issues figured out. All right, so should we move on to DraftKings or what? Sure. Who's doing the read? Uh, any volunteers? Tyler. <laughs> I, I can do it, Bruce, if Tyler's really not. Uh... <laughs> All right. As a member of the Hockey Podcast Network, the Fantasy Hockey Hacks podcast is a proud partner of DraftKings. Hockey fans, the pursuit for the Stanley Cup is on, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has an unbelievable offer for the most exciting playoffs in sports. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. Win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during the playoffs? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets, like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more. It's your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Bet $5 on any sports team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's promo code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility requirements or restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Um, like we've said in the past, if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, there's a bunch of different numbers here based on the state you live in or the area you live in, text lines, um, URLs, all the rest of it. It's a problem. We recognize that, and sports gambling is more popular now than it's ever been. Uh, Tyler, how'd, you, how'd your week go? Were you, were you betting on anything? Any parlays? Any any DFS plays? What's going on? Uh, I tried the, the the DFS for the first time. I had no clue what I was doing. Zero. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Um, but I finished like eighth. Yeah, I I actually, yeah, the text message. Four, yeah, am I doing this right? It was like 492 <laughs> people or something. Yeah, I fished. I think I won ten bucks, so that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, nice. And then I had the old, uh, the old parlay, game seven parlay. Of course, you Ed- Edmonton, Carolina, and Tampa got them all right. Oh, that a boy! There yeah. you go. Good so, job. It was good. That was the all only right. bet I made all week. So you picked them right. Picked them right. There you go. Every once in a while, you gotta get them right. <laughs> the, yeah. 
not often <laughs> enough, but I'll take it. I actually, I won my first DFS contest last week, so I was pretty pumped about that. Like I've first place, first place, yeah. Wow. Um, I haven't done that yet before. I think I've come close. I've been somewhere in the top two or three, and I've done some some of the freebies and stuff like that. But I, I finally won a contest. I was pretty pumped. The unfortunate thing was, the payout was only like five bucks because I, I won the wrong contest, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> None of us know what we're doing. We are hacks. So, yeah, we are hacks. There you go. Um, okay, well, let's move on to round one highlights and our round two preview. Uh, we're going to check in really quick here. Bruce, NHL Bracket Challenge. Tyler, I don't know if you actually got around to submitting a bracket, did you? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay, how, how are you doing right now? Because I haven't checked. I don't even. What did you put your name under? I don't know my name. I don't know, like, because I, I don't see Tyler in here, but... It's probably hot garbage or something. Okay. Well, Holy I know that smokes. I'm... I'm not even on here. Yeah, I, I don't see you in the top 22, so I don't know what happened to your bracket, <laughs> but... It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to look this up. We're going to have we'll, to look this up. We'll, we'll circle back around to that. Tyler, if you can find your name, I'm not sure where you're at. Holy um, I am sitting in third currently with 79 points. Bruce is in eighth with 73 points. Like I said on the live stream earlier, Bruce, shout out to Doug Warner, who's sitting in second right now. I don't know how that happened, but um, <laughs> we, we've got a bet going, a friendly bet going. I put 10 bucks on the Oilers to win this Battle of Alberta series. He put 10 bucks on Calgary. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ride or die with the Oilers. I'm I'm not super confident, but I'm gonna take it. So, uh, FHH live. So our game picks so far through the first round, Bruce. I'm at sixty two point seven five percent. You are at fifty point nine eight percent. Tyler and John, we do not have participating. Just you guys have both been really busy. Tyler, you were out in BC and trying to take over the world doing different things. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. Uh, cons, my thoughts. Quick update this morning. So Kale McCarr is the favorite right now at plus 550. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, plus 550. Connor McDavid at plus 1,400. Alexander just Barkov. Yeah, just a sprinkle. Just a sprinkle. <laughs> uh, Alexander Barkov at plus 1,500 and Vasilevsky at plus 1,600. I actually think Vasilevsky at plus 1,600 is a really nice... Like that To me, that's appealing because there's a real chance they can get back to that cup final. Mm-hmm. All right, without further ado, let's talk about round one a little bit more. Obviously, we covered a lot of it in our headlines, uh, so let's not get too in-depth here. But first off, uh, Pittsburgh, New York. New York wins that one 4-3. Um, I think what I found interesting was just it was pretty much dominated by the Penguins 5-on-5, five five, and most people expected New York to dominate on special teams, and that wasn't the case. Um Mika Zibanejad led the way for the Rangers. He's third in scoring right now through seven games. Jake Gensel had eight goals. He led the playoffs in goal scoring. But uh, for how long that's going to last? That last one was pretty good, eh? That was incredible. <laughs> to, for him to kick that up using his foot and then to bat it out of midair. Twice. I missed that one. Twice, yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I sent out a tweet, Bruce, so yeah, go check out the Twitter profile. I'll, but I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, it's it was it was crazy. I wasn't sure if that was going to count, Tyler. Like his stick was awfully close to the crossbar. It was close, but I think I think when you look at it, you just have to give it to him. Cause <laughs> How could you pretty, take that one back? That was pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked Bruce too. The goaltending obviously was a big storyline in that series. The Pittsburgh and the Rangers. Shesterkin was basically outplayed by Pittsburgh's third string option. Yeah. And. You know, as as we'll see, that's kind of my hesitation in picking the Rangers beyond this point. Like, which which Shesterkin are we going to get? And then five on five, they have been great. Uh, Washington and Florida. So, Washington gave Florida a bit of a scare. So, Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're one overtime goal away from going to Game Seven, right? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Excuse me. Somehow, somehow, Florida went 0 for 18 on the power play. I think if you look at that, like, yeah, they were 0 for 18, which is terrible, but they still won the series in six. If they get that figured out, it's going to yep. be kind of scary. So, But they're, they're obviously not. They're going to have a better goaltender to kind of look at here in the second round than they did in the first. So, And, and that's going to be key, too, is which – Vasilevsky's going to show up because he was 
Actually, Bobrovsky had a better save percentage than Vasilevsky through the first round. Um, but Vasilevsky was was very good in Game 7. I think he had a 966 save percentage. So, uh, And then, of course, Carter Verhage. So we won't talk about that anymore. But those are kind of the big storylines, <laughs> in, in my opinion, through that series. Um, Boston, Carolina. Carolina takes that one 4-3. The perfection line almost saved their bacon, Bruce, in Boston. Close, but not quite. And definitely helped out your DFS lineup once or twice. Yeah, once for sure. <laughs> uh, Ranta filled in nicely for Freddie Anderson. 237 goals against average and a 927 save percentage. Jacob Slavin, as we mentioned, was a big story with eight points and two goals through seven games. Uh, Max Domi, nice pick up there, like we said earlier. I didn't have that one on the bingo card. No, we did not. Uh, Tampa versus Toronto. Obviously, didn't go the way as I had planned it or drew it up. Uh, that's okay. I'm actually, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't hurt my feelings. I mean. I predicted just, it perfectly. You you sure did, Bruce. <laughs> uh, yeah, my note here was uh, Matthews, Marner, and the Maple Leafs, Misery. So they're, they're actually the first team in MLB, NBA, and NHL history to lose a winner-take-all game in the opening round for five consecutive seasons. That's impressive. That just that just warms Tyler's heart. He's <laughs> just... filled, filled with happiness. That's good. Uh, the difference this year, though, is that Matthews had nine points and four goals in seven games. Marner had eight points, two goals in seven games. I, I don't think you can look at their the Toronto Stars and say this is on you guys. Um, it's a little different this year, in my opinion. E- even if you talk to Tampa. You know, Stamkos, Kucherov, John Cooper, they all said, had been, they all said, you know what, that was as close a series as we've played in the last three seasons. Um, that team's got something, you know, so it, it could have gone either way. You know, game sevens are basically a coin flip and they're right there. So, yeah, it was very close. It was very close. For as much as we love shitting on the Leafs. Um, and we do, or at least I do. I'll, I'll, tip, do I'll tip my hat to a, a solid effort in this one anyway. Nashville, Colorado pretty much played out like we all predicted. Uh, more so for Bruce, who who properly predicted the the sweep in that one. Uh, Kale McCarr. So, Tyler, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I said earlier, I, I don't know that for all the talk of Nathan McKinnon being the best player in the world through four games against Nashville. Um, somebody said that? Somebody said that, yeah. Lots, oh, Twitter. A lot of people on Twitter were saying that. Uh, huh. Yep. But is he even the best player on his team anymore? No, Kale McCarr is, he has to be right behind McDavid for for best player in the world. And it's crazy how young he is, his position that he plays, um, that he was drafted out of the AJHL. That's crazy. All of it. <laughs> yeah. Like, all of it. He has to be the second best player in the world. Because he basically plays a game like McDavid does from the defensive position. Yeah. Uh, and he's great. good at defense, too. He's not just like a forward back there. He can defend, too. Yeah, and he does it with a long stick. He's lanky. Um, yeah, it's quick. His hands are crazy. He can skate. What yeah. did he have in that one game? He had 12 shots. And twenty three shot attempts against Nashville. Yeah, and they were all dangerous too. They were. Have just... you ever heard of anything like that, Tyler? Twenty three shot attempts and twelve shots on goal. Like that's no, that's insane. No. From a defenseman too. Yeah, like yeah. not even when Eric Carlson was at his peak, right? Like it was just yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and at that point, Carlson couldn't defend either. He was just basically a glorified winger. Yeah, he still can't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't stop you from taking him in fantasy though Tyler <laughs> no I did yeah uh, I think that's pretty much the story in, in Colorado the other thing there was that um, Kemper took a stick in the eye although it sounds like he is just fine uh, and, and the abs are basically going to be 100% in, the, in that series coming up here so uh, St. Louis and Minnesota St. Louis in six obviously Jordan Bennington takes back the crease he had a 1.67 goals against average and a 943 save percentage uh, I'm sure that is a relief for Blues fans and Blues management. Now they can, you know, worry about holding on to him and and probably. I mean, it's too bad because 
Huso's going to walk for nothing, right? He's a UFA. Pretty much, unless they try trading his trading his rights in the off season, but or maybe they sign and trade him. Could be that could be a possibility too, because they're not going to be able to afford a you know eleven million dollars in goaltenders. Nope. Be nice, but they can't afford it. They're they're in a cap crunch too. Uh, Dallas and Calgary. If you were a Flames fan last night, uh, you were sweating bullets. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you were one shot from Jake Ottinger stealing that series. Mm-hmm. And so, but saying that, I think all all of us on this podcast feel better knowing that we're going to get the Battle of Alberta for the first time since 1991 in the playoffs. It's going to be fun to watch. Lots of fun to watch. I don't know if I can physically handle it. Like I don't know if my heart can do it. <laughs> it scared me when I was stroke at some point. Um, <laughs> I would have actually, I would have been okay too with the Dallas series. Uh, it would have been boring, like the way they would have shut it down and tied everything up. But um, we've watched as an Oiler fan so many Dallas series where Dallas was the the big bad team that nobody could beat and yep. mm-hmm. beat Edmonton every single time. Um, yep. So it would have been nice to see that again. And I think it would have worked out the other way. But, um, it's going to be a tough series against against Calgary. Yeah, I, I think my heart would have been just fine with a, a Dallas Edmonton series. Like I think it would have been a little less chaotic. Th- this one's going to be just a shit show for for six <laughs> or seven games, right? It's going to be. It's going to be seven games of murder. Is what it's going to be. Yeah, there's going to be bodies stacked up like cordwood in the hallways when these guys are done. Yeah. So just just be prepared for all the the fun Daryl Sutter press conferences too. <laughs> Colorado is going to be happy with whoever comes out of this one because there's not going to be much left of them. So that's right. Probably They're not. Pretty much going to walk to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. Um, I said it earlier on the live stream. Apologies to Johnny Goudreau because I basically talked shit about him like two weeks ago, but um, he had eight points, two goals in seven games. Tied for sixth in scoring. He's he's actually and he had the series winner in overtime yesterday. So some good things there from him. Uh, and then just last bit of news here from the first round was was obviously Evanston in L.A. Evanston winning that series four three. Connor did Connor things. Uh, Mike Smith. I'm going to give Mike Smith some credit here just to piss off John. At age <laughs> at age forty, he was phenomenal. I think he's sitting fourth or fifth in the league in save percentage and goals against average. He looked rock solid in Game Seven. Hey Tyler. Yeah, in Game Seven he did, but man, he just makes me uncomfortable <laughs> just watching him. Like when he comes out to play the puck, if he doesn't give it away, he's gonna fall down getting back to the crease. Or he'll be <laughs> facing the inside of the net when the puck is coming the other way. You just so, never know what you're gonna get. So, correct, but correct me. F- he sorry, does guys, battle. Yes. He does battle. Schmitty battles. And I hate, I hate that phrase, but he really does. <laughs> <laughs> it's accurate. It's it's I an guess, accurate phrase. I guess that's all you can ask for. Um, I will say, like, I noticed, it, it seemed to me anyway, that in games five, six, and seven, Smith was much less likely to play the puck. Like, he seemed hesitant to come out of his net. Yeah, there was, there was one in game seven where he came out, missed it, went back to the net, did a 360 on his knees, <laughs> and then was, like, <laughs> laying at the other side. And thank God the puck didn't turn over. Yeah. Um, but it, it, just, but in general, am I wrong? It seemed like he, he did come out a little bit less than normal. Yeah, yeah, probably. But the other thing, too, in this next series, Markstrom is almost as good at handling the puck as Mike Smith is. But he does it in a much smoother, <laughs> more aesthetic <laughs> way than Mike Smith does, where you feel comfortable watching it. Sure. I feel very <laughs> uncomfortable watching it. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, Evander Kane. I, we got to talk about Evander Kane. Um, ha- has to be the best in-season acquisition this year, in my opinion. It's not close. Third most goals through his first six games in the postseason in Oilers history. Only Mark Messier with nine and Wayne Gretzky with eight have more goals through their first six playoff games with the franchise. Um, I loved. I loved everything about his game. I loved him putting up seven fingers. Uh, mm-hmm. screw anybody who thought that was a big deal. Cause it wasn't, it was just him saying going to game seven. He wasn't counting his goals. Um, that's just nonsense. Get out of here with that shit. 
I want this guy back. I like him, love him or hate him. Like the, the guy on ice, phenomenal hockey player. He's what the Oilers need. He better be back. Definitely. next. Did you see McDavid talking to him on the bench after? I don't think that had anything to do with the seven thing. I think it did. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. There's no way that Connor was that upset about him putting up his fingers. Did you see when he came back into like the celebration and McDavid talked to him? I, Kane, I, can't, I saw him turned away like immediately and went to the bench. And then sitting on the bench, McDavid was talking to him but not looking at him. I don't know. I, I, don't, I know. don't know. There, there was a lot of talk that, that, that McDavid was just upset about the refs or, or something, but yeah. I, I'm just trying to put myself in Connor's shoes. Like, why would that bother you so much? Because you're, 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 you're kind of showing up the other team and you're kind of asking for it. Um, kind of like Kempe with the stupid. Well, but that was part of it, right? It's, it's gamesmanship, that, right? I think that's why Kane did it is because I, I think so too, but I don't think McDavid likes that stuff. Like, I think he'd rather just, I don't know. It's probably not yep. a big deal, yep. but because it's Kane, you have to talk about it. Of course. Yeah. No, a fair point. Fair point. I, and they, they're obviously both very different personalities, right? So that it wouldn't shock me that, that maybe that did upset Connor, but I don't know. You got a guy on your team who's going to score 40 for you if he's there next year. So maybe you let him put up his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> They'll figure it out. It's fine. It's I mean, fine. It's fine. I'd let it happen too. Um, all right, let's get to our round two preview here. We're just going to rip through this quickly because Bruce, we've been, we've been chatting for, uh, well, close Almost to an hour down. now. Yep, and I kind of figured this would happen because we, uh, we're we kind of chatty Cathy's around here. So um, we got four series here in the second round, starting with St. Louis and Colorado. St. Louis is the underdog here at plus 290, Colorado at minus 380. The Avs won that season series 2-1. to one. Bruce, we talked about this earlier on the, on the live stream. They've got the number one rated power play at 43.8%. Uh, they've been scoring over five goals, four per game. 30.8% of the power play for St. Louis, 3.67 goals for per game. Uh, this is going to be a, a tight series. I've got it going six or seven games, but ultimately I'm taking Colorado. Tyler, who's your pick? Colorado. Has to be. Yeah. And Bruce, I know your pick, but go ahead. Yeah, it's going to be Colorado too, but it's going to be six or seven games. This one is not going to be as easy for them as was the Nashville series. They're going to have to work for this one. Okay. There you have it. Uh, Edmonton, Calgary. I feel like we talked about this a lot already, but plus 165 for the Oilers and minus 190 for the Flames. Tyler, I know you're putting a sprinkle on that at plus 165. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. You better get in there, buddy. Come on. Because <laughs> you're not going to get plus money after the Oilers win a game or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't mortgage the house or anything. I'm just no, saying, like, just, you know, just, sprinkle, just, just a little sprinkle. That's all. A little sprinkle. sprinkle. Uh, the season series was tied two two. You know, it's funny. Someone else had mentioned like there wasn't really a big difference. Like for as much as obviously Calgary's favored in this series, and and for obvious reasons. I mean, both teams and and looking at how the Oilers have played with Jay Woodcroft behind the bench, uh, they've got as good a shot to win this series as Calgary, in my opinion. But. It's gonna be. Oh, this one's going. This one's going seven. I, there's, there's. I can't see it going any other way other than seven. I think officiating is gonna play a huge role in this, and Edmonton not getting kachucked and pulled into taking penalties where they end up shorthanded. Um, if they can stay on the power play, um, they're gonna be in a good spot. So. So speaking of that, Tyler, Edmonton is 36.8% of the power play for second overall in the playoffs. Calgary, 8.3% of the power play at 15. So a uh, big advantage to Edmonton. If they can stay disciplined and let Kachuk just be himself, um, yeah, I think offici- you're right. Officiating will play a role in this. Um, you've got McDavid. And you know, I think they said we've got four top 10 scores right now between McDavid, Dreisaitl, Goudreau, and Kachuk. It'll be fun. Yeah. 
Um, both teams have good numbers. So shot attempts, shots on goal, five on five goals for scoring chances, all the rest of it. Um, it's very close, but Calgary does slightly out edge Edmonton in that regard. Uh, both teams have had great goaltending. Mike Smith, 2.29 goals against average and a 938 save percentage. Jacob Marks from a 1.53 and a 943 save percentage. Yeah, I'm still taking Edmonton in seven games. It's a coin flip, honestly. I I'm just I picked Edmonton to go to the cup final and, and I honestly truly believe if they can get past Calgary, they can do it. Because if they get Colorado in the in the Western final, they've actually played Colorado quite well this year. And I, I think they match up okay against Colorado. I think they match up better against Colorado than they do against Calgary. So Yeah. Um I'm not as convinced that Edmonton actually wins this, but I'll never actually write that down on a piece of paper. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take Edmonton at seven, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we all feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. For Bunch sure. Of nervous, uh, nervous Oilers fans over here. All right, let's uh, move on here. Tampa Bay at plus plus one thirty against Florida, who is favored at minus one fifty. This one, Tyler, you got to put some money on this one. Tampa Bay again is an underdog after winning two straight cups and the team they beat last year in the playoffs. And I understand it's not the same team. Florida is obviously more confident. They've been a better team this year, but at plus 130, I think that's that's some nice money um, on the lightning. Worth a sprinkle. Worth a sprinkle. Season series is tied at two. We're getting the Battle of Florida. Uh, you know, the Panthers have been third in the playoffs with a Corsi four of 55.95%. Second overall with a 64.29 goals for a percentage. As I mentioned earlier, Bob has actually been a little better than Vasilevsky. So Bob has a 2.79 goals against average and a 906 save percentage. Vasilevsky is 304 and 898, uh, although he was spectacular in game seven. And one note that I mentioned earlier as well, Bruce, was Bob's PK save percentage is 0.778%. So we know that number is going to come up at some point. Not sure it comes up in this series, but we'll find out. We sure will. Uh, the power play, obviously, Florida's got to get that figured out. Uh, Tyler, you got to be a little concerned if you're Tampa and you don't have Braden points. Yeah, you definitely do because of the depth in Florida. Um, missing point, especially in the playoffs, is going to be going to be a problem for them. All right, so all that said, Tyler, are you still taking Tampa, or what's your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Only because I said in the beginning that Tampa was going to do it, I'll take them, but I don't like it either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, you're taking Tampa as well, right? I'm taking Tampa, absolutely. Okay, I, I'm going with Florida here, right or wrong, but that was my pick as well, Tyler, in the bracket challenge, and I'm going to stick with Florida, I think. Uh, I think they've got the horses to do it. It's going to be another one of those crazy series. I'll be watching every one of those games because it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so time will tell. And then last but not least here, Carolina at minus 190 versus the Rangers at plus 160. I, yeah, it's got to be Carolina for me. They won the season series 3-1. Um, is Freddie Anderson going to be back in goal? That's the question here. Like Ranta was good. He had a 927, 927 save percentage, but you'd like to see Anderson back, right? Oh, definitely. That team gets a, will get a big boost of confidence with Freddie back there. Uh, I, go ahead, Bruce. I was going to say, I, I think the Rangers are going to have to shore up defensively. They, they're not going to be able to rely on Shesterkin as much in this one. Otherwise, it could be over early for for the Rangers. Yeah, I, I just think they've relied too much on Shesterkin. They've relied too much on special teams. Um, I think Carolina, they, they've got more depth, in my opinion, and I think that 5-on-5, uh, five five, they're probably going to run that series, and it's going to be over in, uh, in probably six games, is my guess. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, six. Me too. Ty you agree, Tyler? Okay. Good stuff. Okay, well, uh, that does it for round two preview. Just really quickly, guys, if you are a listener of the podcast or a viewer of the YouTube channel, um, Bruce and I are doing live streams Monday through Friday at uh, 12.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, if you want to support the show, this episode of Fantasy Hockey Hacks was brought to you by 
Amazon.ca or brought in part to you by Amazon.ca. Uh, new music unlimited subscribers will receive access to six months of Disney Plus users that sign up for Amazon Music Unlimited subscriptions starting at $7.99 per month for Prime members and $9.99 for non-members will have access to Disney Plus for six months. Reviews automatically, new subscribers only, terms and conditions apply. Uh, we are a proud affiliate partner of Amazon.ca. And as an affiliate, we will bring you the latest deals and promotions from the world's largest online retailer. If you enjoy and appreciate the podcast, blog, or other forms of content we provide, please, please use our affiliate link. I'm going to put it in the show notes for you. It's on our website as well. Uh, no hidden fees or additional costs to you. Just a simple, free way to show your support for the show. Thank you very much. And last but not least, guys, if you have any questions you want to submit to us, whether it's... Uh, parlays tyler's an expert at parlays you just send him questions he'll fill you in <laughs> uh dfs season-long fantasy keeper leagues whatever it may be send us your questions and get entered for a free one-year subscription to the left wing left wing lock iphone app and that does it for tonight guys uh oh be sure to check us out on twitter at fhx on instagram at fantasy hockey hacks check out our website at fantasyhockeyhacks.com that does it for me. I'm Devin. I'm Bruce. Oh, <laughs> this is what we're doing. Okay. And that's I'm Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, that's there you go. Me. All right. We will see everybody next week. <laughs> Take care. Good night. <laughs>